Thanks, Ryan and Laurie. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Uh, let me sh quickly share my screen and we can get started. Um, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Great, awesome. <clears throat> Hi everyone, and a very, very good evening. My name is Rujit Lingala, and I'm the Technology and Entrepreneurship Manager at Sight and Life. Um, the presentations that I've been able to hear today have been incredibly satisfying for me. Um, and let me reflect on the central role of food and nutrition in our everyday lives, actually, um, but also in alleviating hunger, poverty, illiteracy, conflict, and inequality across the globe and a fact that's been amplified recently by the Nobel Committee's decision to award the Peace Prize to the World Food Program. Um, <clears throat> a child's course in life should not be determined by where they are born. The truth, however, today is that the socioeconomic circumstances that a child is born into determines the kind of food and nutrition she gets uh, the quality of life she attains and the kinds of opportunities she in turn passes on to her own children. With one in every two children suffering from malnutrition, the truth is today we are failing a majority of our children. Um, governments are struggling with underfunded public health programs and grant programs have very limited reach. With not a single African country on target to end child undernutrition by 2030, um, we've established more or less that business as usual is not really acceptable. And it is time for bold, disruptive, innovative ideas um, to enter um, uh, the space and make food and nutrition accessible, but also sustainable at the same time. Sight and Life is a nutrition think tank and which bridges the nutrition expertise and the priorities of the public sector with the know-how and the reach of the private sector. A key and critical lever that we use is to develop business models that are profitable or sustainably subsidized to increase availability and desirability of nutritious foods. And over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through three business models and share our insights on how we've been able to improve access to nutritious foods uh, through models which are financially sustainable and created income generating opportunities in the communities that we're actually functioning in. And I, with this, I aim to impress upon all of you why the Global South is actually ready and poised for a disruptive startup innovation that can make nutritious foods accessible, available, and affordable. Um, I'll first start with exciting innovations. Eggs are nature's multivitamins. They're densely packed with highly digestible proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals. And it's in fact amazing how nature packs so much nutrition within so few calories. In fact, research in Bangladesh and Ecuador actually showed that an egg a day for children significantly reduced stunting and underweight. What's more, children absolutely love them. In fact, as a young child, I have fond, very fond memories of chasing chickens in my grandmother's backyard. And eggs were so scarce and so precious back then that we used to patiently wait for them to lay eggs and carefully take them back to my grandmother who made yummy Indian egg curries. Uh, since then, India has come very far, in fact. Um, it's now the world's third largest producer of eggs. And eggs are now easily available and affordable in India. However, in most low and middle income countries, eggs still remain extremely costly and scarce. This is because most countries are still dependent on the backyard poultry farming to meet their needs. A model that is riddled with multiple problems from extremely high mortality of birds to very low productivity. In fact, out of every 10 chickens that are raised through the backyard model, an average six die before they complete their life cycle. And that's a huge loss. And the eggs that they produce are one fourth or 25% compared to industrial standards of production. 
and to understand how do we transition the countries from egg deficiency to egg sufficiency through business model solutions. Um, Sight and Life has conducted over 200 interviews and, and studies with stakeholders across the egg industry in countries ranging from Kenya, Ethiopia, Malawi, uh, Rwanda, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. And if I can synthesize all of my learnings into one word, it would be this, aggregation. Aggregation of the smallholder farmers to provide easy support and training, aggregation of inputs for easy supply to the farmers, aggregation of eggs produced so that they can be supplied into markets and people that need them the most. The egg hub shown here, um, the next slide, yes. The egg hub shown here is an example of such an aggregation. Think of the centralized egg hub as a centrally located physical unit, which can aggregate high quality raw materials, birds, vaccines, and medicines, and then supply, to, supply them to all the smallholder farmers who are located within a radius of 100 kilometers. The eggs that these farmers uh, produce will then be collected by the hub and supplied into locations that need them the most. These could be schools, this could be hospitals, um, and even into institutional feeding programs. At the very minimum, a viable egg hub supports about 100 farmers, creates about 500 additional jobs, leads to a 10 times rise in productivity, provides 150 million eggs every year, and gives an egg a day to about 400,000 people. The egg hub is not a theoretical concept. We have actually implemented an egg hub in Malawi with resounding success. Uh, the program aggregates backyard farmers and provides them with high quality inputs at wholesale rates on credit, training and extension services. And eggs produced in these farms are then either sold in the community or collected back by the hub. Um, about four and a half million eggs that are fresher and cheaper than competitor brands are being produced every year. These eggs reach vulnerable communities, including refugee camps, churches, convents, schools, and markets. Each year, and each farmer makes approximately uh, 2.3 times the minimum wage in Malawi. And our farmers come from all walks of life, convent nuns, schools, all women's groups, and the urban poor. And that's about how we've been making eggs more affordable, accessible, and also aspirational in um, the communities that need to eat them the most. Next up, we have Obasima. Obasima is the story of how a quality seal is nudging adolescent girls and women to choose healthy foods in Ghana. Obasima in Akan means a strong and nurturing women. And I think this speaks to the question that Laurie just posed right now about where do we get the most amount of, uh, you know, the nutrition information from the facts on. Um, in Ghana, micronutrient deficiencies are actually very highly prevalent. 20% of Ghanaian women uh, suffer from anemia. 54% of them have folate deficiencies. And Ghanaians also suffer from uh, the double burden of malnutrition with more than about 40% of Ghanaian women being overweight or obese. And behaviors triggering such large scale deficiencies can be found to be rooted in adolescents and school going children. They can be traced back as, to as, as early as adolescent and school going children. In fact, 37% of Ghanaian adolescents skip breakfast and compensate with snacks bought from the market, which are usually high in sugar and fat content. The green seal that you see here on the slide, the Obasima, guarantees nutrition quality and promotes foods in retail markets that are a source of vitamins and minerals. The Obasima project supports local food processors and uh, by giving them technical support, incorporates a variety of marketing approaches to create demand for nutritious products. And the seal is regulated by a government standards body. There are currently about four products in the market which have the Obasima symbol on them a soy mix blend, fortified biscuits, cereal, and a shito sauce. And there've been continuous social marketing um, uh, activities and such social marketing activities like uh, the one that you see on the screen here, target adolescents, and that combined with healthy and nutritious alternatives in the market can nudge them towards healthy eating behaviors. 
Next up, the last um, business model that I wanted to share with you is called Sizanani Mzanzi, which means come together South Africa. It's a social business founded to bring affordable and nutritious foods again to the vulnerable in South African households, while at the same time creating income generating opportunities for low and middle income community members. The products that you see here, an instant bev porridge mix, a powdered beverage and fortified cereal are nutrient dense products and all of them offer 13 vitamins and minerals which we've developed after extensive consumer research and we strongly believe in developing and introducing a product only after um, rigorous consumer research understanding the insights what the consumer wants and the cultural context and only then adapting the product to the cultural contexts the research, the consumer research that I'm talking about led to valuable findings, in fact, about the functional benefits that consumers were demanding and also their latent needs and desires. Um, we found out through this uh, research that there's actually a very strong desire for, from parents to purchase convenient, ready to eat snacks that are nutritious for breakfast or in the lunch box, specifically in the communities that we were trying to reach. And this information further framed and informed our marketing strategy and for example, if I can take an example, um, the porridge was positioned as a convenient, filling, nutritious breakfast that satisfies a mother's need to look after her kids well and also her latent need to therefore be a good mother by taking care of her children. <clears throat> and the, 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 the uh, Sizanani Mazanzi uses two channels to get the product to the customer. The first that you see above is a direct channel where foods are brought directly by a network of agents. And since early 2018, we've also expanded our sales through indirect channels, such as selling to schools, NGOs, retail markets, and youth groups, who then um, in turn sell them to their own consumers. Um, those were the three models that I wanted to discuss and share insights uh, about. But in conclusion, um, cheap junk food attractive to school going children and adolescents and um, uh, ac ac across the age groups, in fact, is easily accessible in local markets. And uh, market based solutions can disrupt the rise of junk food prevalence. And all of our, um, uh, all of the three business models here have been um, uh, supported by the impact investors and the startup community. Uh, to overcome barriers of scale and commercial viability. And these have been successful models. And uh, to bring all of this together, to bring all the threads together, um, if I have to speak to the success factors that we've realized, it's one aggregation um, uh, specifically to lower the cost of production, which we've realized through the Egg Hub in Malawi. Um, and then consumer-centered social marketing uh, to make nutritious foods more desirable and also supporting micro-entrepreneurship uh, by creating income generating opportunities for last mile distribution. And that's what we've realized through Sizanani Mazanzi. <clears throat> and um, in conclusion, nutrition is actually one of the smartest targets for the post 2015 development agenda. In Hi. fact, uh, studies have shown that $1 of investment in nutrition returns a yield of $16. Um, but more importantly, it's also the first step to ensuring that children all over the world thrive, no matter the circumstances in which they are born. And here is to ensuring we don't fail our children. Thank you. Over to you, Laurie. Uh, I can answer any questions if there are any. Absolutely. No, wonderful. Um, indeed, if you have questions, please do put them in the chat. Um, we are also going to have time uh, to stay connected on Slack and also the, uh, after our next speaker, there will be time for some networking where we can directly talk with our uh, speaker today. Thank you so much for sharing. It seems